This is a teardown of a Palo Alto Networks PA500 firewall. And it'll be kind of interesting to see what's inside this. I've kind of done the old peek through the side holes to see what's going on already. So I have a little bit of an idea, but I want to see for certain. I've never really heard about this company before, and I've never seen any, any of their stuff until now. These all came from a recycling pickup. There are a few other units I received, but I haven't looked those up quite yet before making this video. There's a PA200 that I'm thinking is worth resetting the defaults and trying to sell. Assuming I can figure out how to reset the defaults. Also, it's a bit of a long shot, but kind of hoping I can use these screws on my server hard drives. Oh, yeah. feels promising. Kind of tight. I'll probably add these to the collection of screws and see if I can repurpose them. What I really need is screws for two and a half inch, or not two and a half, three and a half inch uh, drive caddies. But no such luck. Although I did inherit some more drives and caddies. So I'm going to be borrowing indefinitely <laughs> some uh, two terabyte drives for storage. Mostly for my cold storage, as I've decided it's time to upgrade and replace that because I want all my stuff to be mounted on rails. And I'm hopeful that I can find a nice custom build 2U chassis to use. Well, warranty's officially void. Or not. There we go. Uh, looks like this slides forward. No. Can't tell which way this goes. I think it slides back. <laughs> Cat's trying to break in. There we go. Oh, percussive maintenance. Ooh. Alright, that's a little different than I was expecting to see in there. So, the motherboard's definitely custom. I did sneak a peek of this hard drive to the side. Also, I saw the power supply, so I kind of had an idea of what I'd be looking at. I'm kind of curious what this has for little memory sticks here. Yeah, 2 gig, but it's not labeled on what it is specifically. It's probably... Based on the age of the hard drive, it's probably DDR2, I would guess. Let's see if there's a date code. 2015? Yeah, I would guess that's probably DDR2 era. I do want to do a quick power on test. I'm kind of curious to see how noisy this is. Kind of cool if this would have been a super micro server, but I didn't figure that was going to be the case. So yeah, just your, you know, basic noise levels for networking equipment. I would assume this is still in its boot mode. The hard drive's on some really crazy shock mounts here. I'm impressed. They must have really been concerned about vibration because I think this is the most springy and built up shock mount I've ever seen. <laughs> Feel the head moving. But yeah, it doesn't seem like the noise level is going to reduce and honestly I don't care. I will be selling the power supply and the fans out of this more than likely. 
SATA cable will go to the SATA cable bin. I'm kind of surprised. I figured I would have uh, sold out of my mixed lot of SATA cables, but the tote still is staying strong. It's most of the way full. My biggest fear is, is I'm going to put in a quantity that's higher than what I have available, but that really hasn't been a problem yet. Alrighty, well, pull this motherboard out. I feel like I'm going to find an Intel chip under one of these. Although I'm thinking this one because of the way the markings look from the side. It's kind of that weird little characteristic that they tend to have from the uh, traces from the die. Alright, missed a screw there. Oh, and one in the middle. This is definitely a very well built unit. I don't particularly know why it's not of any value though. I think this was selling for like 30 bucks on eBay. And that's why it's going to get recycled. Because with what sits here, if it sells for even $50, it's going to cost me $15 for the label. Uh, probably $5 of the packing material. And then another $5 in fees. Well, it's going to cost me $25 to sell this for $50. And then I have to hope that I know how to factory default it and test it. And the customer knows what they're doing. And it's just it's such a high risk item that it's not worth it versus this here will probably give me a dollar's worth of scrap. 15 cents worth of scrap in the hard drive. And then I'll sell the power supply, I'll sell the fans, and I'll sell the rack years. And everything's said and done. I honestly, I'll probably make more money than trying to sell this as a complete unit. Oh, some more screws I missed. Kind of the problem though with, with uh, e-commerce, the shipping and the fees really make it um, not viable to sell this kind of stuff. Like for all I know, this is probably a perfectly fine firewall. It's definitely uh, better looking inside than the Fortinet ones I, I see, because usually the older Fortinet stuff, like the uh, Oh, 60A, 60Bs. Those always have bad caps in them. And I don't even see a single electrolytic capacitor on here. At least not traditional ones. Maybe those surface mount capacitors are electrolytic. I don't think so, though. That's a beefy little board. Oh, that's interesting. The uh, memory sticks are going opposite directions. I am curious to see what's under these heat sinks. And hopefully, my little screwdriver will be good enough and it won't pull off anything I don't want it to. There we go. Oh, nope, I guessed wrong. Kind of had the Intel CPU vibes because of all the. Uh, traces I was seeing on the edge. Oh, I'm going to cut myself doing this. I'm going to be careful. <laughs> Here we go. There we are. Yeah, this last one's going to be tricky. It would be funny if the one I didn't think was the uh, Intel CPU was, but I'm guessing this is all custom at this point. There we go. Unfortunately, the thermal epoxy they used makes it tricky to read what the uh, part numbers are. I'm guessing that maybe this has a dual CPU for redundancy? I don't know. A lot of this stuff I don't research. I just tear it apart because it doesn't really... I mean, if, if I'm going to recycle it, it doesn't really matter to me. Or if I don't know how to use it anyways, like a few of the things. but. Kind of almost looks like that this is like one and then this is like system two almost. I don't know how redundant these kinds of systems are, I guess. Also, I don't know how long I zoomed in, so 
my apologies. I need to improve my teardown setup probably so I can see what I'm recording while I'm recording it. But beyond that, I guess you know, I should remove the uh, hard drive and power supply real quick. Look at those shock mounts. Let's see, those are probably number one. Yep, those are number one. These are number two Phillips. I really like this design though. You can see where all the screw standoffs were for the motherboard. I don't think I'm going to be able to remove this actually. I think the nut's just spinning. Yeah, darn. I just thought I thought maybe the nuts were uh, in contact with the edge of the power supply. Well, let's take a quick look at those hard drive mounts and then call call it good. The one thing I'm kind of bummed about is this older stuff always has hard drives in it, but some of the newer networking appliances I get have solid state drives. So that's a little bit more useful for me when I tear them down because then I get a solid state drive I can put in a computer I'm refurbishing. Let's see here. Some little lock washers there. So those are the shock mounts. I mean, those are. Crazy. Looks like they're hand threaded into the hard drive. They're, they're very tight. Might save those. I'll have to put them in a bag. I don't know what I'll need them for, but maybe in a system build or something they'll come in handy. But hopefully that was interesting, and uh, thanks for watching.